Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study live. Now, I don't have anything to do with the songs who was being played, but that was a fitting song because it fits right in line with some things I'm going to say today. This is one of those messages that uh, I want you to Call your friends and relatives or share whatever you, whatever they do. Amen. Share with friends, neighbors. I'm going to be talking to, especially to people in relationships. Perhaps thinking about marriage. Some make plans, and they may be far, far down the road. You understand what I mean? But I'm going to say some things that the Lord has directed me to go into. I told you last week we'd be talking about this today. And so I want you to really listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thinking about that song takes me back to the service we were having at that time years ago. We started singing that song. Had people could, wouldn't, couldn't get along with one another, and didn't like one another. I was, in prompt, I was prompted by the Spirit of God to have people just go to people. People that you don't usually go to. People that you don't like. I always had a problem with Christians saying, I don't like him or I don't like her. I've always had a problem with that. I think that's of the devil, really, and of your flesh. And certainly not of God. You can like dislike some things about people, but you have to understand, you know, when problems come, and there are issues, 
And people do some nasty things sometimes, say nasty things sometimes, act in a nasty manner, and all of that. But let us remember that our real battle is with the enemy and not those people. And very often, those people don't know, but they too are victims of the enemy because he's really trying to harm them and destroy their lives. He wants them to have an attitude that gives him an entrance into their lives and sometimes into their bodies so that he can do harm. But love and forgiveness closes the door. Amen. Now before we get into our lesson tonight, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Praise God. And then we'll get right into what we want to talk about. Our Father God, we thank you again for this opportunity to come before you. Thank, the, thank you that you are our Father, our very own Father. And we are your very own children. We are saved and sanctified by the precious blood of Jesus and continually being sanctified daily by the word which lives and abides forever. Thank you for the great mighty Holy Ghost who have been sent to be our teacher, to be our guide, to indwell us, to lead us and guide us into all truth, to unveil the living word Jesus through the written word. I trust him to live big in me today and to think through my mind and speak through my lips and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer that I may speak as the oracles of God. And Lord, I thank you for utterance so that I will minister to people because you know everyone that's tuning in and you know what everyone needs and I thank you for meeting needs and there are people you want to speak to through this word today and some are in a, a state of readiness a mind of readiness to move in certain directions in their lives and I thank you for this word it may very well save a person's life. It may very well save a person from some hardships down the road, some unhappiness, some depression, because you have rescued them from a situation that they find themselves in or would, would find themselves in if you had not rescued them. I would thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now again, I want to encourage you to share this. Get everybody you can to tune in right now. Amen. Because it's on. Praise God. So lift your Bibles with me. Say with me, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me, to change me, and to be glorified through my life. Therefore, I set myself in agreement with His Word by having a receptive heart and a readiness of mind to receive. And by being a doer of the Word I hear, and not a hero only. I realize that obedience to God's word is essential in order to have God's best for my life. Amen. Now I knew since last week, or a couple of weeks ago actually, that I would be sharing these things today. Now last week we talked a little bit about Help you understand that Satan plants people in your life 
sometimes. There are friendships that we don't need and shouldn't have. There are those type of relationships, in some cases, that we need to avoid altogether. And if we're involved, then we need to break it. Amen. But today, I'm, as I told you, I will be going into things more about relationships, people dating or going together and perhaps thinking about marriage and all these kinds of things. You may not be deep, deep into it. You, know, you might just be thinking about you want to have somebody, a husband or a wife. You want God to give you somebody. Praise God for that. And sometimes God gives us signs. People pray and ask God, Oh, Lord, show me. Oh, show me, Lord, show me, Lord. And sometimes we are insensitive. And we cannot see what he's trying to show us. We can't hear what he's saying to us. And so he goes a different way. And give us different signs to make us know. And I'm going to talk about some signs, seven signs, that God doesn't want you with someone. Seven signs that God doesn't want you with someone. Now, I'll be honest with you. Depending on who you are and what state you're in, and the level of that state that you're in, you may, you may find this difficult. Or you may find it liberating. Amen. A message like this, a lesson like this, I should say, it's not a sermon, but a lesson like this can, could, could, could make you shouting glad or fighting mad. It all depends on you. It was in your heart. Amen. But we went <clears throat> through our Bible confession, lift our Bibles. We did all of that. We prayed. And we're getting into the uh, seven signs that God doesn't want you with someone. We're going to talk about this. I was thinking about, about this to, a little earlier today few hours ago and I was thinking about something. The Lord brought something back to my remembrance. I know all kinds of cases of people who got married to the wrong person. Married to the wrong person. Some, many, some cases I know personally, some are, uh, testimonies I heard, and it's sad to me, very sad. I'm thinking about this one testimony that I heard of a woman in this church who, had, who was about to be married. She had her wedding plans and all of that. Not only that, it was coming on the time of the wedding. In the, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been like a night or so before the wedding when this woman's pastor called her in and said, Daughter, the Lord told me to tell you not to marry this man. Now somebody might say, wait a minute, why would God wait until the night before, two days before? Who says God waited? I'm sure God was given other signs, but the woman was not hearing or seeing these signs. But the woman pressed on because they had spent money, the invitations had gone out, and people are planning to come. To do it because of that. 
But what she found out after she got married, that the man uh, turned out to be a homosexual. And this was troubling to her. I mean, it just tore her apart. You understand? Now, why? Oh, my God. I mean, I'm sure she said, oh, God, why? 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 I'm sure she said, oh, God, why didn't I see this? How come I didn't, you know, I didn't see what all this. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The reason why we don't see certain things. One thing is you don't want to see it. And so when the red flags come up, some people think they're green lights. They're like, well, go, hurry up and go. But we're going to we'll tell you about that in a minute. Then I'll tell you about this other case, this, this woman that I, I knew. Young lady loved the Lord. She's in the church, in this particular church. Met her many years ago, back in the 70s. And when I met her, she was a divorced woman. And I knew that the church that she was in and the organization that that church was a part of really frowned on, the, on divorce and remarriage. In fact, if you were divorced, there was a little chance of you getting married again. And I remember talking to the young lady, and she was telling me how the, the pastor told her, you can't get married again. You just can't get married. Because you experienced, you went through a divorce. And she said to me, she told me something. I really laughed. I know it wasn't funny. But she was serious. But it, she said, I told the pastor, no, that's not true. Because I didn't have a husband. I had a wife. In other words, when she got married, she found out that this man also, I don't know altogether if he was a homosexual, but he, he liked to dress in women's clothes, with clothes and, and she caught him by coming home, catching him with her, her stuff on and makeup and undergarments and all of this, and it was devastating. Here's someone who loves the Lord, spirit-filled, born-again believer, and they go through such a tragedy. <clears throat> I would call that a tragedy. Excuse me. That was something devastating. It's devastating. I can tell you other cases that I know of not the same kind of issue, but where people got married, and it was not until after they were married that they discovered some things that made them regret marrying that person. And it's on both sides, men and women. But I've seen, to be honest with you, I've seen mostly on women, on the side of women, being sorry about getting married and so forth. When I think about signs, what are, what are signs? And what are, what are signs? Well, we have all kinds of signs. Now, many of you know that, that, that I am a pilot. And when I'm, when I'm on the, um, when I'm at the airport, I'm going, I'm going flying, there are signs on, on, on every airport that'll tell you where you are and other signs tell you the direction to something else. You know, you are at this taxiway. 
the taxiway, uh, whatever is in this direction. Runway, depending larger airports, they have a lot of run, several runways and all that. And so you need directional signs to tell you where you are. This is where you are. And we all are familiar with stop signs, yield signs, do not cross, all kind of signs. They're there to give us information. Well, in the with the Lord and in the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of God and in the Spirit world, God, in dealing with us, gives us signs. He tries to get something over to us. He said, God tries, yes, yes. He can't just make it, make you see it. He, he shows you, and if you obey the scriptures and follow him like you should, then you begin to see certain things. You'll see signs. Now why is it that God needs to use signs to help people? Because sometimes People are so blinded by emotions or emotional ties to people that they are unable to hear or unable to be led by the Spirit of God. So he gives us signs, clear signs of what we need to avoid to be in agreement with his best for us. Because no matter what you've experienced, in your life. Let me tell you, first of all, you didn't experience, it's not God's fault. God didn't make it happen that way. Life is choice driven. And you and I live and die by the choices we make. God does not choose for us. He will tell us sometimes what to choose. But he doesn't choose for us. He'll tell us what direction to go in. But he will not grab us and pull us in that direction no matter what. And very often people are praying. Sincerely praying. Oh God show me. Sometimes God is showing you. But we're not seeing what he's trying to show us. And then, then people get upset. If the Lord used somebody else to show you, you know, pastors know what I'm talking about. If the Lord show you something, you have to tell somebody. Sometimes people get bothered with you because you don't see it the way they see it. Amen. But it's not our job to try to please everybody. It's our job to look out for the flock and to care for them and love them. And to be truthful with them. And tell them right. And even, even when it hurts. I'm not talking about beating people up. I'm talking about in love. Helping them see what they need to see. Sometimes the direction people are going in, they can't see it. Sometimes we, we have the unenviable uh, job, if you will, or responsibility of sharing with people. And when people will receive, sometimes we can help them. Sometimes you can help them. And what a blessing it is. But sometimes you can't. And you can't do anything about it. Praise God. There's two things I learned years ago that you can never help people. It's almost impossible. I didn't say it was impossible. It's very near impossible to change people on. Two things. It's almost impossible to change people's direction on. One, when they decide to be married to somebody. And two, when they decide that the Lord told them something or showed them something. I'm telling you, God himself can't, can't change these people's mind. Because that's how locked in that people get about what they decide. 
Especially when the Lord showed me and the Lord showed me. Because they wanted to be God so bad, they won't hear anything else. And you know, if you be honest, a lot of people that claim the Lord told them something or showed them something did not test it at all. They didn't put any test to it. They did not test to make sure it was God. Well, I had a dream. And that was the second dream I had. And I had that second dream, that same thing. So I know it's God. Because the Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every word to be established. So I got two witnesses. See how deceiving that, I mean, that's so subjective and foolish. And that's when a person is deceiving themselves. A second dream doesn't mean that that was God confirming the first one. Do you understand what the dream meant? Do you understand dream symbols? I mean biblical dream symbols. I don't mean stuff you get out of from the street. I mean from the world. From psychics and those kind of people. I'm not talking about that nonsense. I'm talking about biblical signs. Do we test that? A voice told me this, that, and the other. Do you test that against the Word of God? How many people prayed, and while they were praying, they heard a voice say, this is the one. And it turned out to be not the one. They thought they were marrying Dr. Jekyll. And they woke up on honeymoon night or the next morning with Mr. Hyde. These are sad realities. It's not always going to go your way. And your way, you know, it's not in man to choose his own way or to direct his own steps according to the Word of God. You can't direct your own steps. You don't have enough information about God, about yourself, about life. It's not in man to direct his own steps. That's what the Scripture teaches. That's why we have to rely upon him. And if we have an open heart and a sensitive heart to the Spirit of God, he will always, did you hear me? Always lead you right. If you got surprised with something and you found out this is not who you thought they were, that was not because God did not give you signs. You may not have not recognized the signs or ignored the signs. But he tried to get something over to you. I know some people personally that was in the World Trade Center uh, when the uh, towers were attacked, the planes went in. And I'm thinking about somebody now that I used to go to church with. And this man came out of the building of course, he was covered with all that ash and all the other things, but he survived. He did not die. Something in him told him to get out of there. I believe that God tried to warn people, but people just did not hear. I believe many people died that would not have died if they had been sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm not blaming them. You blaming the, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just telling you that some things happen that shouldn't happen that even God doesn't want to happen. And If we hear him it will be avoided. Hey, let's, let's look at one quick thing. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, didn't he? That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How about 2 Peter 3 and 9? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us with, not willing that any should perish, 
but that all should come to repentance. Every person who died lost, died lost because they did not hear or respond to the message, God's message of love. Amen. And because they didn't, they lost their life, their eternity, excuse me. <clears throat> so now they have a lost eternity, not because God wanted it to. He said, well, you blaming, I'm not blaming anybody. It's either, this is the way out. If you don't take the way out, you suffer the consequences. It's that simple. Sometimes, as I said, we're so blinded by emotions and emotional ties to people that we're unable to be led by the Spirit of God, amen, or to hear Him. But God is always trying to lead us in line with His perfect will for us. Now, Let's start talking about some of these signs. Let's talk about some of these signs that God will give you that says he doesn't want you with this person. He doesn't want you with them. I'm going to give you seven clear signs that God doesn't want you with someone. Are you listening to me now? Here is a major sign, the first one I'm going to talk about. Your relationship with this individual is not built on genuine love. The God kind of love, real love. Your relationship is not built on genuine love. Sometimes Relationships are forged for all kinds of reasons, except genuine love. People decide to get hooked up with other people based upon money. Oh, he makes a lot of money. Oh, he's rich. Oh, she's got this or that. Sometimes it's looks. Sometimes, you know, his complexion. He fine, she fine, oh man, look at her shape and all that, this, this, all kind of things. Let me tell you, the Bible says that the outward man is perishing, but the inward man is renewed day by day. You, we've all heard the term, this saying, <clears throat> excuse me, beauty fades. Beauty fades. However, however fine she was or, or is or he is or you are, those things are going to change. Amen. They're going to change. Thank you. Your looks are going to change. They're going to change. Your skin is going to wrinkle. Your hair color is going to change, turn gray or white. Keep living. You're going to find that you, things are changing in your body. Everybody's going to change. That's, that's just the way it is. So, if you get hooked up with somebody on the basis of looks, what are you going to do when their looks start changing? I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to start looking. If, if that's your thing, you're going to be looking elsewhere. You're going to be looking elsewhere because it was looks. And when she doesn't look like she used to look, you're going to see somebody else that look better. Or, or, or the same thing, either way, I'm saying he or she, but it could be either way. So if your relationship 
with the person is not built on genuine love, then then it's it's not what God has for you. That's a sign that this person is not for you. If it's about money, wrong. If it's about prestige, wrong. If it's about social status, what kind of car they drive, how popular they are on their job, or whatever else we come up with, these are all not signs that we should be relying, things we should rely upon. Amen. Your relationship must be built on genuine love. The love of God. God is love. God loves us and he wants us to love one another. He wants, and he certainly, if he wants us to love one another, he certainly wants a man and woman to love each other. Now let me say this. Here's another thing. I said genuine love because people sometimes uh, talk about, well, I'm in love. I don't know how many. I can't count them. How many messed up uh, you know, how many people got walked down the aisle and how many things are all messed up? When you try to help them before, they say, well, but I love him. Love, you ought to be loving them. But this thing that people be falling in and out of is not the kind of love I'm talking about. To my genuine love of God. You ought to know this thing we call falling in love. You ought to know that's not reliable. I mean, if it, even when it tell you fall into it, that ought to tell you something. If you fall in, you can fall out. It's got to be more than that. Of course, if you marry somebody, you should love them. I mean, you should really love them. But loving them or being in love with them by itself is not enough. There's more to it than that. Somebody said, if you love them, then, that, then you marry them. But you want to know what that is? That's a wisdom that doesn't come from God. You know, in um, James chapter 3, in verse 15, it's not talking about love as such, like I'm talking about now. But it is saying something here that I want you to hear. This wisdom, descending not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Did you know there's a wisdom that is of this world and of this earth? Now, do you know there's a wisdom that is sensual? It's all about sensuality. And that is devilish or demonic. Just because it sounds like it makes sense don't mean it does. At least not God's sense. Amen. And so let's move on to some of these other signs. Sign number two, that this is someone that God does not want you with. The relationship with the individual affects your relationship with God negatively. Your relationship with the person affects your relationship with God negatively. If you go on with somebody, your relationship with somebody like that, how has it affected your relationship with God? How about answer this? The closer you get with this individual, are you further or closer to God? And sometimes people get with people just because they're lonely. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of eating meals on my own by myself. I'm tired 
of all of these things and I, I need somebody. But if you let that drive you alone, you're going to be in trouble. Many of you, especially those of you that's uh, in our church, you've heard me say this for years. If you let your emotions drive, you don't get to determine where you wind up. If your emotion, if you let your emotions drive, you don't get to determine where you wind up. It'd be like you sitting in somebody's car and you're in the back seat and they decide we're going over here. I'm driving, I'm taking, you say, where you going? They starting to turn the car. I'm going to the mall. I don't want to go to the mall. Well, I'm going to the mall. You don't get to determine where you're going because you're not driving. Whoever's driving decides where that car is going. If your emotions are driving your life, then your emotions are going to determine where you wind up, not you. You may not want to be there. And if your emotions drive, you can not only do you not determine where you wind up, you're not going to like where you wind up. And you may be stuck where you wind up. So we can't just go by emotions. So ask yourself a question. Um, is your relationship with God negatively affected by, by your relationship with this individual? I've seen this happen. Here's somebody love God. So they say, I mean, you can. I mean, you know, Jesus spoke, spoke to the church and he told them they left their first love. So you can, you can love God and you can change. How about this? The scripture talks about people loving pleasure more than, love, being lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It doesn't mean they don't love God. They just love pleasures more than they love God. God wants to be number one, not number five, number three, number two. He wants to be number one. Ask yourself this. You know, sometimes a person really loves the Lord, they want they pray, you know, how was your relationship with the Lord before you and this person got together? And how is it different now? Do you pray as much as you used to pray? How about this? You used to go to church, Bible study. You had a certain time that you spent studying the Word and praying. Oh, you were on fire. But now you're with somebody who's demanding more of your time. And they'll say something, well, I mean, you can go to church anytime. I mean, you can always go to church. Why, why you got to go now? I mean, could you just not go today? I need you to, I want to spend some time with you. Now wake up because this individual does not have your best interests at heart. And you can tell that their relationship with God is a little different because it doesn't matter to them as much. Have you changed how you treat God? Do you have as much time for him as you used to have before you got involved? If not, that's not the one for you. That is a sign that this is not somebody God wants you with. God wants to be number one in your life. He says, you shall have no other God before me. Anything we put in front of God becomes our God. It's our idol. God doesn't want anything before him. He don't want you loving anybody. Your wife, your husband, your children, your job, your money, your bank account. He don't want you loving anything more than you love him. Period. He doesn't want you loving anything. And some people say they love God, 
But that man or that woman can change your mind about something, things you used to be dedicated to. Now you're no longer dedicated to it. You got to miss this. You're on the choir, but you can't go to rehearsal because, you know, he want to spend it. I want to take you. I, I'm, I just want to take you out to dinner today. I had it all planned. Well, that's my rehearsal night. I mean, can't you just miss rehearsal this one time? That's a devil. What you say? I said, that's a devil. Say that again, Pastor Holmes. Thank you, believe I will. I said, that is a devil. That is a selfish individual who is not thinking about anything but what they want. So they put pressure on you to do what they want. You may well shout amen, because it's true. Everything I'm telling you is true. Amen. Now, how the closer that you are with this person, how does it make you feel? As far as your relationship with God, does it make you feel closer to God or further from God? Amen. Closer to God or further from God? If you're in a relationship with somebody and that makes you feel I'm not, I'm not where I used to be, you need to do that. What's that thing Michael Jackson used to do? The moonwalk. You need to moonwalk right on out of that thing. Amen. That's God signing to you. Now, really, do you love God? How much? I preached, you know, recently. But Jesus had those disciples there and he was talking to Peter after his resurrection and all that and they ate the fish and all. He said, lovest thou me more than these? Now you can say you love him, but he wants to know, do you love him more than these? Do you love him more than Mr. Fine? Or Miss Fine? Do you love him enough that you want to please him more than anybody else? I want to please God more than I want to please my wife. And I want my wife to want to feel the same way, and I'm sure she does. Please God more than she want to please me. More. Any relationship you are in, a friendship or any other kind of relationship that pulls you away from God is not of God. It's a trick of the devil. So be careful. Now here's another sign, number three. Another sign that you're with someone that God doesn't want you to be with. You're involved in a relationship as such, but peace is absent. God's peace is absent. God's peace is absent. I want to go over here to the scriptures. Let's go over here to Thessalonians. Let's read something. Second Thessalonians. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter three. And we'll start, we'll read verse sixteen. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, the Lord is with you all. The Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means. You should be at peace. At peace. I don't mean just peace in your mind. Heart peace. You, you should be at peace. Are you at peace? Ask yourself that. 
Don't, I'm not talking about you. You can be persuaded to do anything or everything. Sometimes people make a mistake. They tell a guy what they, a young lady tells a guy, well, this is what I got to have. I mean, you got to love the Lord. You got to go to church. This, that, and the other. And so what does he do? He goes to church because you said that. He act like he loved the Lord. But you can tell how much he loved the Lord by how he lived his life. I had a man come tell me. He sat in my office talking to me. He was a car salesman. And he told me, he said, I'll do anything to get to sale. He said, I keep a Bible in my desk. At, at my job, I keep a Bible in the desk. And so when somebody come to me, talking about the Lord and, and they're Christian, I, I put my Bible, I get on my knees and pray with them. Let's pray that God will give you wisdom. He said, he would do anything. That wasn't from his heart. That wasn't from his heart. He, this man literally told me that. So it wasn't really from his heart. He would do whatever it took to get the sale. Some guys will do whatever it takes to get the bride. To get you as the bride. You put certain demands and so they want to show you that. I want somebody to go to church. Just because you love the Lord don't mean they do. And just because they go to church don't mean much either. I, I'm thinking of another case, another situation. A man and a woman. This man had this woman thinking a certain thing about church and about God and all of this. He laid it on thick. He made her believe. You know, she would say what her desires were and what she going to you know about church and this that, and the other. And he waited until after they were married, to tell her he had different views on things. You know, people go into things sometimes with their eyes wide shut. <laughs> wide shut, not wide open, wide shut. We start missing certain things because we want something so much. Until when God trying to show us something, we can't see it. We start rebuking him, call it the devil. The blood of Jesus, the devil is a liar. The devil don't want me to be mad. If somebody tried to tell you something, oh, you're just jealous. You don't want me to have anything. And that's what the devil tells people. They're just saying that because they don't, they're jealous of you. They don't want you to be happy. See, they don't have nobody. They don't want you to be happy. So the devil will do that. Here's another another thing. Another lie from the devil. Another trick. Here, your pastor, your man of God trying to tell you something. And the devil says, see, he's saying that, but he married. He already married. So so it's easy for him to say, you ought to do this. You wait a minute. And it's so easy for him to say that. Because he married. But you, how long have you been waiting? That's the devil. Those are the thoughts that go through your mind, but you need to understand that's the enemy, not God. Yeah, are you listening out there? Are you, are you listening out there? Because I'm telling the truth. This, I, I told you earlier, for some, depending on who we are and where you are, this may be hard. But I'm telling you the truth. Because I want to save people. So ask yourself that question. Do you have God's peace? Just think about it. Are you, do you have God's peace? I'm not talking about somebody talk to you. Some of these people got a golden tongue. They'll talk an Eskimo in a binder refrigerator. Amen. They just have the gift of gab. That don't mean it's a gift from God. Only good gifts come from God. 
every good and perfect gift come, gift come down from above. From the Father of lights. In whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. If God's going to give you somebody, and he will, he's going to give you somebody that's going to love him and that's going to love you. Not somebody front. How does, how does this person act when they're under pressure? Have you ever seen them upset or angry? How, how, how do they act? Uh, do they still, you still think they're Christian when they finish with you? All right. Sign number four. We only have a few more. But I ain't going to take this to next week. I'm giving you these seven signs. Sign number four. Listen carefully. You're in a relationship, but you consistently long for something better. You consistently long for something better. You may see other couples, godly couples, see who love the Lord and and uh, they are prayerful and all of these other things and you see what you got you're not even married yet I'll tell my daughters spiritual daughters as well that's my natural daughter if I see something I and there I see I say run don't walk run I mean run in the other direction run I have told people that before. I have told spiritual daughters that as well. Run. Don't don't even I mean, don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. Just run. Now I know some of y'all know what that means, but that's about monopoly. It's a game called monopoly. Don't worry about it. The younger people might not know anything about that, I don't know. But run. Run. Run before he start talking. Run. And hear this. Some of you have heard me say this before. If you broke up with somebody, you already been there. What are you running back to that for? You can't step in the river in the same place twice. What does that mean? If you were standing on the bank of a river and you put your foot in the water, and lifted your foot out. When you put your foot back in the water, you ain't stepping in the same water. The one where you stepped before, that water went on down river. You can't step in the river the same place twice. That water you stepped in has moved on down the river. Don't think just because, okay, yes, Lord, I, the Lord has given me something to say to you. Don't think just because a lot of time has passed that now it's, it's going to be better, it's going to be wonderful. How? Who's going to make it wonderful? You. When people show you who they are, somebody told me this came from Maya Angelou. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. And when you're going for round two, you think it's going to be better? What happened? He cut his hair differently now. He smelled better. He dresses nicer. He got a better car. He got a better job. Really? Is that what it is? Is he changed? Has he changed? His Himself. Has his heart changed? Has his thinking changed? Or hers? I keep saying his because I deal so much with 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 women. Or has her mind changed? Has her heart changed? Does she think differently? What you want to go back there for? She sure look good. So what? 
She may look good and better and better and better every time you see her. But as I told you earlier, looks is not the only thing. Now, I was, I told you I was going to say, I said I was going to say something about this. And I really almost forget it slipped away from me. But the Spirit of God just told me a minute ago to go to it. Let me tell you why. It is so difficult for some people to stay away from people that is no good for them. That they don't need to be with, but they keep running back to them. I'm going to tell you the real reason. is because people have been having sex. And the Bible teaches that whoever when you whoever you have sex with you're joined to that person it's almost like a marriage that's why some people are so messed up cuz they've been with so many different people they're joined to 2 3 4 6 7 different people and then when you get with that person not only are you joined to that person but you're joined to everybody else they're joined to. No wonder you are an emotional basket case. You have all kind of issues because the people you were with have issues. And women, young ladies, you're on the receiving end. The Bible says that whoever's joined, whoever And it gets with a harlot, is joined to that harlot. And now, now you know a harlot is a prostitute, but what he's trying to give get over to you is that anybody that you have sex with, you get joined to that person. That's why it's hard for you to let go. This is one of the reasons why. Some people break up years later. Years later, you can see that person, hear their voice, receive a text, receive an email, and something, it triggers something. And now you're longing again because of that. And it's going to take some breaking because really that is a, a soul tie. You tied your soul to that person. Like you would tie, tie it to your spouse in a marriage. This is the reason why people have such a difficulty. This is the reason why it's so easy for this individual to come back into your life. Amen. That's a true thing. Now let me go back to that. Number four. You're with somebody but you constantly... Long for something better than you have. If you're longing for something better than what you have, ooh, it's time for you to do the moonwalk. This is a sign to you. This is not someone from God for you. And maybe you not for them. Because you with them and got your eyes somewhere else. Now here's number five. Sign number five. Remember what remember the sign number one? Your relationship is not built on genuine love. Number two, the relationship that you have with this individual affects your relationship with God negatively. Number three, God's peace is absent. It should always be with you. It's absent. If you're not at peace, and I'm thinking about getting married, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't care how fine he or she is. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care what kind of talk they got. What kind of, you know, well, back in my day, we call it rapping. I don't care how good they can rap. I don't care how good they talk. Smooth talkers. 
I, I, I said one time in church, halfway joking, some of these people are so desperate, some women act so desperate a man could give them plastic flowers and buy them a Happy Meal. They'll be satisfied as long as they say, I love you. Some people, that's all they want to hear, I love you. Don't you know they know that that's what you want to hear? Is that what you want to hear? I just want a man to keep telling me he loves me. Well, he'll do it. But that doesn't mean he does. Don't all y'all say man together. Well, I wish I had you together. I could just, I could just feel you out there. <laughs> if, if we were in the service somewhere in church, I'd be looking in your eyes. And if some of y'all be looking funny, I'd be saying, don't look at me in that tone of voice. These are some powerful things that I'm saying tonight. All right. Sign number five. Now hear this. The person that you're with doesn't value God. They don't value God. God doesn't mean as much to them sometimes as you, as you mean to, to them. Like the buster that I was talking about earlier, telling you, oh, can't you just miss? I planned for us to go out. I planned a dinner. Why is this joker planning a dinner on the night that you usually have rehearsal or Bible study or something else. Then he put the pressure on you. I wanted to surprise you. Could you just miss? I mean, just one time? That's a devil. That's a devil. I don't care who he is, where he live, what state, what city, what country. That's a devil. Amen. And you ought to be running in the other direction. Running for your life. Because mark my words. Stay with that. And you will regret it. Down the road, you will regret it. You can't make somebody love God. You can't make somebody value God. If they don't value him on their own, you can't make them. You can't give them a set of, I got to have this and I got to have that. And think that that's going to do it. If it's not in them, it's not in them. And you can't put it in them. They got to want to love God for themselves. They got to value him for themselves. Not for you. Not to please you. Man, there's never, it is never a wise thing to be hooked up with somebody that's trying to do stuff because you demanded it. How long will that last? When they grow tired, when they start feeling like you're too demanding, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Now, which one are you getting? Fighting mad or shouting glad? I told you we're going to be do one of them things for you. All right. Sign number six. The person is more important to you than God. And, and believe me, there are people like that. That person they go with, the person they're interested in, the person they want to marry, is more important to them than God. More important than God. You know, we are constantly, whether you know it or not, we are constantly in a state of spiritual warfare. The devil is after you. He is after you. And he's working 24-7. Strategizing. Watching you. Watching your life. Watching the choices you make. To see how he can set you up. 
how he can get you in a position where he can hurt you and destroy you. He's after you. You need to understand that. He's after you. When you get to a point where somebody else is more important to you than God is. I, I, I want to please God, but... Oh, that's a problem. Let me tell you this other thing. I remember years ago, many years ago, a young lady came to me because her and this guy she was going with, they were going to, they were planning them the wedding. I mean, they were days away from the wedding and he was putting pressure on her to have sex with him. He putting pressure on her, trying to make her, I mean, don't matter, I mean, we're going to be married anyway. Uh, that's another devil. We're going to be married anyway. What do you mean we're going to be married anyway? If a man is willing to violate the word of God to be with you, well, let me tell you, that's not love. It is not love. That's lust. It is not the love of God. Anybody of pulling you away, trying to, well, can't you just miss one time? Why do I need to miss one time? And then when I miss one time, is there, is there going to be a second time? How about your prayer time? I mean, can't you study the, I mean, can't you go to miss one Bible study? I know you said you want to pray and spend some time praying and all that, but I, I you know, I want to, I want to do some special things with you. You better see that. That person does not value God. I don't care what they're telling you. They can tell you anything they want. They're smoking mirrors. Go by what they do. Not what they say. Go by what they suggest to you. If somebody's suggesting that you do something inconsistent, with the will of God, the plan of God, or what is right or righteous, that's a sign to you. And I guarantee you, it's not the last thing that will happen in your life. Not the last thing. And then, number seven. You're involved with somebody but the relationship has become toxic. Amen. Let me go. Let me go over here to James. Go to um, James. James 1 and verse 17. Listen, listen. I, I, I said this, I made mention of it. I didn't turn to it, but I'm turning to it now. James 1, 17. Every good and a gift and every perfect gift is from above. If it's not good, it's not from him. Every good and gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is consistent. God is consistent. Praise God. So again, the seventh sign that God does not want you with this individual is that the relationship has become toxic. What is toxic? Toxic means it's very harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. 
What is insidious? Proceeding in a gradual, subtle way, but with harmful effects. So sometimes you're in a relationship uh, that is harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. It proceeds in a gradual, subtle way, but with harmful effects. You know, it's better. And by the way, if you believe God and you trust God, you know, God wants you to be at peace and he wants you to be in a marriage that you want to be married. Some people say, well, I don't know if God wants me to be married. Do you want to be married? And well, then that's it. That's good enough right there. God's the one that instituted marriage. He's the one that came up with that. God did. God brought Eve to Adam. He didn't have Adam searching. He brought Eve to Adam. God knows how. Remember I talked about how that God will connect you with your pastor. Something about hearing the voice, and you just get the witness. Just like when, when Jonathan heard David, as soon as he heard him speak, then his soul was knitted with David, and he started loving, he loved David immediately with his own soul. I mean, like he, I mean, like he loved his own soul. That's what the Bible says. I believe God can connect you with the person and you know it. You have that peace on the inside of you. If you're struggling, struggling in your mind and back and forth, just stop. Don't roll over the caution sign. When, when you see the signs that caution, it may take, you know, be cautious. Don't run the sign down. Just be cautious. It may not feel as, it may not feel good to you. But it may hurt you if you don't. God wants the best for you. You ever pray about it? You ever ask God to show you? Show you? You know, I've seen you know, young ladies some guy hollering, hollering at you, want to want your number, and this, that, and the other. I've heard, I heard. I mean, I didn't see. I wasn't there in person to see it. I saw it on TV. Some, some lame telling some young silly girl, hey, "Have my baby." She, said, what you gonna do with him after she have him? You ain't got a job. You ain't got nothing. What, what, what are you going to do after you have the baby? You be chasing him. Trying to get him to buy you, you buy some diapers for that baby. He'll be going on about his business. And you left, left with the baby that you had my baby. You, you be left with the baby and he going on about his business. Now listen and listen carefully. Ooh, I didn't, I didn't know I was going all the way here, but I'm here now. I'm going, I'm going to give you, I'm going, this is for late women. Now let me tell you something about men, especially men don't know the Lord, especially them. A man will go as far as you let him go. If you want to play, he'll let you be the toy. But in the back of his mind, he's seeing how easy it is. He may brag. I'm talking about unsaved men. He may brag about it. 
tell his boys what he did, you know, and all that. He may pound his chest, but he won't choose you as a wife. Because he sees you as somebody too easy. Don't let anybody fool you or lie to you. If he see you easy, he'll mess with you, but he won't respect you. And he won't choose you as a wife. Oh, you preaching now, Pastor. Why, thank you. Believe I will. Believe I am. Amen. Praise God. So those are the seven signs. I'll go over one, one last time. Your relationship is not built on genuine love. The relationship affects your relationship with God. God's peace is absent. You consistently long for some something better. The person that you're with doesn't value God. The person that you're with is more important to you than God. And then, number seven, the relationship has become toxic. That is very harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. And I told you insidious meant proceeding in a gradual, subtle way, but with harmful effects. You got to do more than say, I got to have this and I got to have that. If you tell it to somebody, then they will try to make it as though they are what you are saying. Why don't you look for the thing you say you got to have? And when you see that that's not, it's not there with this person, that's not it. When we went out, well, all right, you can find out a whole lot if you stop, you know, doing this Googleized stuff. But listen, if you're going on it, well, talk. Listen, you learn a whole lot by listening to people about them. I've asked, is the guy saved? Well, I'm, I'm, he go to church. Man, please. What's wrong with you? If that's the answer, he go to church. Then you, don't, you know you don't know he's saved. And if you don't know he's saved, you ain't asking me anything about being saved. And you might be ashamed yourself that you're saved, if you are. But if you're ashamed of him, of the Lord, in this adulterous and sinful generation. He's going to be ashamed of you when he come before the presence of his father. When he come before the father in the presence of the holy angels. You don't want him ashamed of you. So don't you act ashamed of him. If you were some guy that think you just be you too holy for him, thank him and go on about your business. Will God ever tell you you're too holy? Certainly not. If, the, if you're too holy for the man, he ain't the man for you or the woman. If she tell you, oh, you just you're too holy. Really? I mean, always talking about God. Always talking about the Bible. I don't want to talk about that sometimes. I'm on, oh, Really? Does that sound like somebody God is joining you with? If you think that, you need your head examined because it's sure not him. Not God. These are people that don't value God. These are people that evidently have no relationship with him. Amen. Praise God. You know, I could talk for another day. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But I believe, I believe you got something out of that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word and for these things that you inspired me to speak. 
You have sons and daughters out there locked in with people that's going to ruin them if they go all the way with them. There are some that, I mean, they know they need. Even if, if, if they just found out tonight, they need to change. I pray that you give people courage and the wherewithal to make decisions for their lives that will be better for them in the long run. And Lord, thank you for your peace over people that desire a husband or wife. It is your desire that they have the best. Send your best to them in the name of Jesus. Cause their paths to cross with the right one. The perfect fit. We know no human is perfect. But there can be a perfect fit. This is the best for this person. Nobody wants to be married and wishing they had someone else. So Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your grace and the grace upon your people to obey you, to always put you first. Because if we're going to have the best in life, we're going to have to have you to be number one in our lives. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for touching and blessing your people through this message today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for coming. Praise God. We're going to give to our to the work of God. You got blessed. Why don't you give? Help us. Praise God. To do what we do in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're a member of our church, I want to just tell you, your pastor loves you. He really does. He loves you. He's looking out for you. And he's not going to do anything to harm you. How do I know? Because I'm him. I'm your pastor. That's, that's how I know. <laughs> Praise God. Your pastor loves you. He prays for you. And he wants the very best for you. That's what you need to understand. So I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. In Jesus' holy name. See you next time. Amen.